Hello, my name is Lena and I'm Pulse Knitting. Today I will talk about my trip to Iceland, uh, what we did there, we, my husband and I, and um, where we drove, um, the yarn shops that we visited, and we went through three. So the three are the Woolen Circle, they're called. And accidentally, it was just the luckiest, the best day for us to just do it when we did it. We went to see the Black Sand Sea uh, beach. And on the way there, um, my husband decided to stop at those three shops. Uh, one of them I thought would be open later, but it was opening early for some reason, and we stopped by. So the uh, shop is called Hespa, just like this. And when we, uh, we were the first ones, it was nine o'clock in the morning, we were the first ones to show up and Gudrun, the owner, opened the, the doors and she asked if we belonged to the group of people uh, the, from the bus uh, coming for a, a lecture of some sort. And we had no idea and we just said, no, we're actually passing by. And uh, if we can stay and look at the yarn and listen maybe to what she had to say, it'll be great. So we enter and apparently it's her house, actually. She lives there. She lives there. And then you can see the kitchen. You can see the pots where she dyes the yarn using natural uh, color. And then you're suddenly in her living room and next to the shelves with yarn and the puzzle that she created. And another puzzle that will be coming out, I think, in like a month or two. So that was quite an experience. Uh, she offered us some coffee. I was able to browse. Here's the bus with people. And all of the people just show up at the, at the yarn shop and she's giving them a lecture on the history of yarn dyeing in Iceland. And it was very interesting. I recorded bits and pieces of it. And well, here they are. So I could make more. So I went to a farmer's market, sold it, and after that, People started calling me at home asking if they could look in the dye box. And before I knew it, I was receiving first thoughts of people in my kitchen, <laughs> showing them in the dye box, selling the yarn in the living room. So that is how this started, this open studio idea. The cat wants to go on the bus. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and uh, it was just a I got a bigger studio and I was doing this in the summer and teaching at the university in the winter. So it's fine for many years, but then I needed, I wanted to do this my full-time job. I needed more tourists. They're in the south. They're chasing the golden circle. So I moved here. Right. I'm quite happy with that. And I have more space for the yarn that I'm selling. Uh, it's Icelandic wool. Of course, and I have kits here with patterns for certain projects. And the pattern is in Iceland, English, German, and French. Hmm. Oh, wow. It's tough to make a living from handcraft. Takes time, takes a lot of time. So I have extra products. All my extra products should be educational. You're supposed to learn something about old for a few hundred years. Uh, it's completely natural. It's an insect from Central and South America. Mm -hmm. It's cochineal. Mm -hmm. Very well known source of red mm -hmm. and pink. Uh, uh, they live in <coughs> yeah, Central and South America and also in hotter places in the States. Mm -hmm. New Mexico, Texas, Arizona, where you have the prickly pear cactus, this mm. one might follow. Mm. So the female attaches itself to the cactus when it's ready for mating. Of course, it's the floral that gives the pink. It's not the male, uh, of course. So the female stays on the cactus when it's ready for mating. Male flies around, does his duty, job done, he dies. Female stays on the cactus, <laughs> makes this color, which you can use for textiles or food coloring, E120. So if you're eating gummy bears, strawberry yogurt, salami sausages, or drinking cocktails, or, or using cosmetics, it's everywhere, E120. So you've been eating a lot of bugs. <laughs> it's good for you, it's protein. Yum, yum. 
Well, I could go on until midnight, but yeah. maybe this is enough for now. But do you have any questions? Can you share with us where you get the wool and how? That... It's yeah, Icelandic wool from uh, the wool factory in Iceland. Okay. Uh, that factory is corporately owned by the farmers, so all the wool goes there. And I get it pre spun for me mm -hmm. like this. Uh -huh. I don't have time to spin it, uh, also big cones. I don't have time to hand spin it all myself. And I have the thinner version, which is ink band. It's uh, very traditional. This is what we were spinning on our spinning wheels in the old, old days. It's in the shelves closure here. And this is so good because you can adjust it almost to any knitting project. You can use small or big needles with it, doesn't matter. Good for shawls, mittens, lighter sweaters. And then I have the thicker version, which is very popular today for the loppy sweaters or hats and mittens. But this has needle sizes 3 to 4.5 millimeters mm -hmm. European sizes. It's a fixed size. <clears throat> so I only use Icelandic wool. Of course, this would work for silk, linen, uh, all kinds of cotton, mm -hmm. and so on. But since we've just been working with wool, that is what I do. I try constantly working with silk. I completely ruined it because I worked on this. After listening to her lecture or her story, I, of course, I wanted to support her. I wanted to get that puzzle so uh, I could just do it in winter time. So we we got the puzzle. Well, I got the puzzle. And uh, the puzzle for the travelers comes not in a box, but in a really nice bag that you can probably use as a uh, project bag. And then um, her little book on the Icelandic dyeing that's actually her writing it so this is her dissertation she has phd and she's extremely bright and very genuine and and just amazing amazing person so she tells you all of that and um well she gives those tours so there's a thousand piece puzzle right here in this bag and this is what it looks like this is what it's gonna be and the new one, um, I think it was like some, some sort of plants or something. It was still interesting. I would get it. I would totally get it. Um, maybe next time. I hope I'll go back to Iceland because that was an amazing experience overall. Just, just so good. So while we were there, I came across this book. And that's another thing that I got. So it's Icelandic knitwear, uh, hand knits, and uh, by Helen Magnusson. And I was inspired, like a lot. This was an inspiration to some future stuff. So I decided to get this book. Um, I'm a bookworm, I love books. I have a bazillion of them. And this will be an amazing addition to collection that will inspire many, many needs. So that was that. And then, so she uses Istex yarn and uh, she dyes it using natural colors. Uh, the exception is the indigo blue, I think that's the only one. Um, and then she obviously tells the story about the dyeing process and all of that. Um, the yellow one, she said, was the easiest to dye and she had quite a, be like a few yellow ones. I chose these, uh, some of them limited quantities, but I needed sweater quantity for one so I can use the colors. And I do have a six uh, unband um, in different colors in my stash uh, in sweater quantities. So I can actually combine these and um, just create something beautiful. And I already have some projects in my mind uh, where to use it, what to use it for. And then I got sweater quantity and then some of this beautiful green. So that was that, uh, three of those. So the next shop that we stopped by was uh, the Thingborg.
of the shop dyes her own yarn it's still Eastex. um this is this is what i got there and i thought it would be nice as a color work somewhere and then she told me that uh the yarn that's created for her shop is slightly different than regular plutolopi or unbound or, or any anything um the process is slightly different and it's slightly softer and it was softer it is softer so i decided to get this and i decided to get the plutolopi that is created for her shop and yes there is a difference so i only got two of these but i wanted to use them for a project i was wearing my soon to be released probably in august or september uh, cowl and i thought all right i already have the cowl uh, the pattern is written. Um, I will announce the test knit probably in two months, maybe in in um, August slash September, something like that. I haven't decided yet. I'm trying to figure out my schedule. It's not so this will be another hat and another cowl that I was wearing in um, in Iceland, and you will see some pictures. I'll just include some pictures of us um, going and snorkeling in ice water and then some food and some sightseeing. Um, it, it was amazing, but this uh, cowl and this hat were with me all the time. I brought some other hat, but I tend not to wear them anymore. I wear this design that's actually published and the cowl will come with it. And then something else will be a part of that collection and I will let you know in a second what it is. So I was happy to get this. And then, because I love unspun yarn so much and designing with it would be amazing. So I thought, okay, why not create something with the colors that I see there? Because you don't get to see these colors on average anywhere. I have a few of really beautiful unspun, colorful uh, skeins, but not like this. So this one was from the same shop and and then this is by the same brand i just wanted to get the blue and by the same brand just different blue so these are those and i have like two two of these one of each of those, but I thought I might just create something beautiful with that. Um, and I have a lot of off-white uh, or black, so I think I'll create something something amazing. And then I, I got this color. So it's pretty accurate to what's maybe slightly brighter um, in the, on the camera, slightly pinkish, more pinkish life but uh, it was it just stood out to me and they had brilliant colors brilliant the whole wall is just oh my gosh um and the last so the, there's three shops and they come in this brochure so when you uh, at any given shop you have this uh this brochure they will encircle and then these are the shops so this was the hespa the first shop this was the second shop and then this one. Bunny started as a sheep farm where we, uh, where they, we, wow, I, a dream come true probably would be, um, what they raised sheep for meat and, um, and then they wanted to use everything and the meat was cheap. So she decided to create uh, her own yarn and the yarn is brilliant um we were not able to record uh so the tours are offered you have to pay for them we decided to get it and to to go on a tour with um 
with Hulda. And her name, so she's the twin and she was hidden. And the whole thing is, uh, that's the whole brand. It's around her being hidden in a womb, hidden woman. And she tells you the story about the mill, how she started it. Uh, that part we could not record. She is not allowing you to do that. Um, only because she's showing the yarn and the process. But we recorded the uh, uh, the machines that she got from Canada. Those machines work best for her and for her needs and for the quality of yarn that she creates. <laughs> I mean, you can hear the noise from the first floor and the shop is actually on the second floor. And as you get there and she tells you what she created from the regular, her named by her, that's her name. So Hilda is her name and, um, or Hilda Ban, she's Hilda, Hilda, Hilda. I am so sorry. Sometimes it's like even just to say thank you. Uh, Thaka Perthavir took us a while and then she was trying to teach us how to say even like bigger thank you. And it's a, it's a lot. I was thinking that it's so much harder than Russian. Um, anyway, this is her, this is the yarn that she started with. And then she has all kinds of different varieties of different yarns. Uh, including the cashmere and silk and uh, milk fiber with rose and when she showed it it was beautiful it resembled silk um feel and look but it wasn't silk i was surprised that it was like milk byproduct and rose petals byproduct it it, it was insane but it I would love to have that yarn for some softer, uh, maybe summer knits, something like that, when I will get to the point. Right now, I'm just trying to get my staple sweater out, and then I will dab into some summer knits, everything that I have drawn for years, but just concentrated more on seamless knitwear and proper fit of it. So. Uh, then she, uh, after she talked about, uh, obviously she has passion for the mill and everything that she does and the yarn is gorgeous. I was so sorry that I got only DK, but I, it, it's a lot of yarn and sometimes the overflow of yarn, it could be overwhelming even at, in your house, it's a bit overwhelming. So sometimes you just want to like, okay, let me design with this. And then I will order this. And this is fingering yarn. Um, natural colors or uh, there's colors. And I would 
love to have something like that in my collection too. So uh, designer collection, not yarn collection. I have more than plenty. Trust me, this is like a few yarn shops. But I like to be able to just walk in and select. This, though, will inspire an absolutely amazing Icelandic sweater. I do have, I drew it as we were driving. I was, I was drawing. I already know what I would want to include. I would already know what I want to include to make it absolutely just mine and uh, very unique. So it's not just the fit. It will be the design itself, the color work and some additional pattern, including little bits and pieces. So um, I got what a quantity of these two colors and this is just a highlight. So majority would be, of course, the uh, natural one. And then as we were talking, she said that she was completely out of the sock yarn. And I really, really, really wanted some of that sock yarn. She said, well, maybe she can find something. And they said, well, I have a design and I want to release it at the end of the year. Um, maybe even have a knit along or something like that. Uh, it's just an idea. We'll see how it goes because I really want to keep the schedule. Uh, I really want to just do something without it being a burden. And because I have a full-time job and this and a lot of passion for knitting, I still want to balance it somewhat and, and my health, I still want a balance of all of it. So she actually found a few skeins of the most perfect yarn for those socks. I will knit them with lighter yarn so you can see it more, but these will be the most durable. And this is like DK weight. It's more, it's like heavier than that. Um, it's close. It's like light worsted. It's, it's really, really good. And I thought, all right, the thicker sock would be better, especially with my seamless seams and everything that that sock is, it would be great. But I will make the same sock in probably Plutalopi, um, maybe uh, strengthen with mohair or something like that, because it'll be fluffy, it'll be still soft, but it will have the structure and it will be light to show the texture for the pictures. But this I will wear, like wear the heck out of it. So uh, she was able to find it and she created this, I hope you can see it, this. She tied it the, with a thread like that going through. There it is. And then she found the label and just put the label on it. So that was very special. I will share that pattern with her. And it doesn't hurt because it's just laying there, moving slowly, and you can see it's not tumbling. Uh, The whole trip was amazing. Um, 
I absolutely love Iceland. Uh, Icelandic water is is so good. The cleanest. The mo I know the differences between water. My husband once tried to uh, test if I do know the difference or see the difference, feel the difference, taste the difference, and he just poured like a few glasses of different waters and uh, and like no, this one is this. This one is so bad. This one is better. This one is good. Um, this is the cleanest, the most. Oh my God, the best tasting water anywhere and in our hotel we had a machine that uh, you had an option of carbonated water uh, and you just fill the whatever we had bottles we had empty bottles that we would fill out with that water and we will go venture out for the day and come back and refill them and in the morning fill them up again it's free everywhere um, in the uh, at the cafes it's given in 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 those bottles with like little lids everywhere it's just so good and um the the whole experience uh of geysers and uh oh snorkeling in ice water glaciers uh, food amazing food uh bakeries the best sourdough bread i ever had in my entire life period just just so so good um, so all of that, the experience, I'll show you some of the pictures. I hope it could give you an idea of what it is. Um, but I would go there in a heartbeat. Maybe even stay over the winter. Uh, the White Nights is, was a huge surprise for me. Did I know about them? Yes, I did. Can you imagine that it could be light during uh, night? Um, it's kind of you kind of imagined it right but when you drive at 11 at night and it's light it's not as bright as during the day it's slightly foggy but it's light it you can just drive forever like okay this is still day i can still use that time here we uh we came back and we were driving at 9 30 and it's dark and you're just falling asleep and you're not in a mood and you're depressed. But I'm thinking maybe they're depressed too during the winter time when they have only four hours of daylight. But uh, maybe it'll be good for knitting. Just sit at home when you knit, right? Or uh, most of the people that we met and we talked to um, that live there, not native, some native, some, some, some that moved from Holland, some other places. But they said the worst thing is the rain. When it's cold and rainy, you really can't go anywhere. When it's snow, it's fine. But when it's cold and rainy, you just you just can't. It's it, it's just it's like chilling you to to the bones. And um, lagoons were amazing experience. I had no idea. I thought I would like warmth and warm water. And only in lagoons, only like Sky Lagoon actually was the very last one. Right before the flight, we went to Sky Lagoon and went through the seven step experience. And you have to dip yourself in ice cold water. Um, all that was done after ice cold water snorkeling. So it wasn't that new for us, but at least there we had dry suits and s some extra layers underneath. Here, you're basically in your bathing suit and you're just dunking yourself in ice cold water. And then sauna, and you hit up to like point of no return, and then a cold shower, and then scrub, and then steam room, and then a another shower, and then another dip into the cold and then warm water. Um, I didn't, I, I didn't want to stay in the warm water anymore. Um, I wanted in the hot, like hot spring, I just wanted to get out of there and just go and dip myself again in the cold water because that felt much better for just overall uh, inflamed body at this point a little bit. But all of that just made me feel so much better. Um, and I started liking the cold. Um, I do like the cold because I can wear sweaters. Um, Right now, it's pretty cold at home. It's pretty warm outside, but I still would prefer to stay inside and wear a sweater. So cold right now is my friend. Um, so all of this, all of this, I can't unfortunately knit at the moment. Um, I had to stop for a little bit due to some problems, but um, 
I wanted to share this with you. So uh, while we were driving to the airport to go to Iceland and um, I had some stuff with me that I was working on. So this is the kids version of um, Knit to Fit Yoke. And you can tell like this is larger neckline so it could fit over the little tiny or big heads and tiny bodies more better. And then um, I had to stop, but there's no increases here. All of the shaping is done around the shoulders. And this is where I'm still playing and there's a shoulder shape. There's actually a shoulder shape right here. And all of the increases, I'm just still, I'm still playing with them because I think I would like to modify it slightly in the next pattern. That will be a, a pattern, but you can still you can still just take it and and make it yours. Just modify it, uh, include it'll be a sixteen stitch repeat uh, pattern, but at the top and then um, four stitch repeat at the throughout the whole thing. But in there, I will change something slightly because this way with test knitters, I'll be able to see how it works and if they like it and if it fits better. So this is the kids version. Um, it just has to be longer because these little things, they're long. They're, they're long and, and skinny, most of them. And then um, I had a little bit of time before I couldn't work on it to work on my, my size knit to fit. And I am considering leaving like just making the sleeves short so it's the same do you see that that beautiful and there's back neckline drop that i've talked about in the previous knit cast it's right there that right here right there so i i'm considering to just getting it cropped like it will be probably it will hit somewhere high hip so it's okay, but I wanted it to be three quarter sleeve and I'm thinking I'll just get it to here and when I'll recover, I'll be able to do another one with uh, just longer sleeve, I think. And then I almost, almost finished the uh, original one, the warmer version. Uh, this is Wool Dreamers. Uh, De Hesse de Barrera and in here you can see that I just included the stripe so I'm working on both sleeves using magic loop I'll show in one of the really short videos how I join seamlessly uh, magic loop uh, the question was asked I explained but it's always best to just show it to you so this is the uh, knit to fit with one stripe just one stripe it's not blocked so this one is finished um this one is long enough for me to hit the high hip and that's how because usually i fold these but they're somewhere in there around that area and i wear layers all the time so this will be perfect but i want it to, to be long sleeve instead of three quarters because sometimes i just like long sleeves and i i can't i, I can't knit at the point so I hope I will be able to finish it by June uh, June 16th um, and just take a few pictures just for the photo shoot because I have no, not even one uh, knit to fit yoke. I have a lot of didos day in day out sweater which will be coming out at the same, same day. But you can take the uh, day in day out sweater and knit it out of, uh, it's just decay. That one's fingering, this one is decay and uh, knit it out of cotton. And that's as simple as that. And modify it any way you want to. Uh, there's a reverse seconded stitch here, but you can just really just knit it and stripe it any way you want to. Um, just substitute anything you want to really it, make it your own. I'm just giving you the bare bones. Uh, if you want to work the first one, just to follow the pattern and to see what it's like, follow it. If not, uh, I've, my test knitters uh, asked, like, is it okay to do that? Yes, it's okay to do that. Um, I'm worried about structural fit, not that it will look identical to the pattern. 
a lot of it does, which is thankfully great because people can see, but then knitters can see, oh, you can do actually this with this pattern. So this is what I'm after. You can do anything you want with one simple pattern and adjust it. It doesn't mean that I will not produce something different, something, uh, something with a pattern. I will, I wanted to show you one, but then I thought, uh, for now, I'll keep it a little bit a secret and then and then I'll show you what it is. So slowly, I'll be coming out with patterns. Uh, some of them inspired by Iceland um, and all of the beautiful yarns and colors in front of me. Uh, some uh, on the back of my mind that, that I've had for a long time. Uh, perfect yarn for socks that I really wanted to. And I thought I do like fingering yarn socks, but these ones i thought would be absolutely amazing knit in slightly thicker uh yarn um worse it would be too much but i thought maybe like heavy decay light worsted something something like that and this is this is decay actually that's what it says that's what it says probably this one is five millimeter needles so hmm, i'll probably i wouldn't work five with this I would go four. That would be my my staple. Four millimeter uh, US size six. That that would be that. And the design there, it's it will create fluffier, like really something um, unusual. Um, that's it for today. I hope you liked it. I hope you like the footage. Um, stay uh, for a little longer to see all of the beautiful places we saw, the snorkeling uh, footage, all of that stuff. Um, it's just uh, a little bit of our adventure. I'm just showing you a little bit of our adventure, uh, what we do when we travel. Until next time, I'll knit a lot, knit beautifully fit sweaters, and um, stay happy and healthy. Mm -hmm.